The machine is working. That was the quote from Dara Kashrashahi on Uber's earnings call yesterday. Investors seem to agree for the most part. The stock is rocketing higher by some 13 percent. As shareholders look beyond the $2.6 billion loss in the second quarter and to the bright spots, a beat on revenue, a beat on bookings, free cash flow, $382 million. D.A. Davidson's Tom White joins us now for a deeper dive into these Uber numbers. Um, And Tom, where do you think in terms of as you think about where we are in the cycle for Uber, how do you think of their positioning right now? Yeah. Uh, first off, thanks for having me. So, so look, I, I think from our perspective, the second quarter results from Uber provide probably the most convincing evidence yet that this company and the scale advantages it has over its competitors, uh, the multi-product nature of the platform that it's building, uh, that you know it is well on its way to uh, to building a sustainably profitable and and self-funding business. In, in local commerce. Um, you know, obviously there's uh, a, a fair bit of um, headwinds seemingly impacting uh, consumers, um, but you know, the company delivered really strong upside uh, in their core uh, mobility segment. Uh, the delivery segment also held up relatively well also. Uh, and really, the, I think the main takeaway from the financial results was the bottom line performance. Uh, they delivered big upside on, on EBITDA and probably most importantly in the eyes of institutional investors, uh, they, they pulled forward their positive free cash flow uh, by a couple of quarters. So they had sort of guided that the fourth quarter of this year, they were gonna hit positive free cash flow. Uh, they delivered solidly positive free cash flow here in the second quarter and, and indicated that that's gonna kind of continue here no matter what uh, what the macro uh, backdrop looks like. So uh, I think that's what you're seeing with the stock reaction this morning. We were talking earlier about the importance of Uber's equivalent of a prime customer, as Amazon would see, a customer that spends more across each of its categories, whether that be on the ride sharing front, whether that be on the deliveries front. And so where we're seeing even more interest from the prospective customers here versus attrition or churn in the future, what most notably would you be keeping an eye on with regard to that component of the business? Yeah, look, I think uh, membership and subscriptions are uh, really a very important part of the story here. Uh, Uber, I think, has finally settled on a, uh, a membership product called Uber One that looks like um, you know, this will probably be for the foreseeable future, kind of the, the core offering for them on the membership side. Uh, they talked this morning about having, I think, over 10 million members. Uh, they shared some stats about how uh, Uber One um, uh, members are significantly more engaged and, and purchase a lot more than, than non-members. But I think it's just an example of, um, you know, the, the benefits and the synergies that are afforded by uh, Uber having this multi-product platform. You know, say relative to a company like like Lyft, for example, which is really sort of more of a pure play on on rideshare. Uh, Uber is is building out this um, increasingly diverse, increasingly broad local commerce platform, and we're seeing kind of growing evidence of there being real synergies between things like mobility and restaurant delivery, uh, grocery delivery, convenience. Um, you know, they've got additional kind of little adjacent flywheels that are starting to pick up in areas like uh, advertising or Uber for business. You know, Uber for business is a neat little opportunity that's both, you know, it's both a mobility play and also a delivery play where Uber is partnering with with large enterprises to help them transport their employees around and, and feed their employees. So, uh, again, you know, the, the synergies and the opportunities afforded by this kind of multi-platform, um, multi-product platform that they're building out. Uh, you know, I think we're starting to see uh, exciting evidence that, you know, they're building something here that's going to be hard for competitors to, to replicate. Tom, uh, we're showing the stock price of Uber and Lyft uh, on there on our screen, seeing Lyft shares up close to 13 percent. The market appears to be reading this. What is good for Uber is also good for Lyft, but Lyft had a challenging first quarter. Is that the right read by the market? Yeah, look, my personal view is that uh, the, the read for Lyft is a, is a little less clear uh, still. Um, you know, uh, Uber had very positive things to say about rider demand. Uh, you know, they talked about uh, not really seeing any erosion of people's appetite to, to, uh, to, to book rides as a result of rising inflation. And, and so that would, uh, you know, generally uh, point to a positive backdrop uh, for Lyft. 
but if you remember, you know, last quarter, you know, it was clear that Lyft was a, a having a little bit tougher time bringing drivers back into the ecosystem. Uh, they signaled last quarter that they need to spend a little bit more aggressively to bring drivers back to, to meet sort of rising demand. So, um, you know, we'll have to see kind of how that's, how that's shaking out, whether that's going to have an implication on, on profitability here in the second quarter. And also, as I touched on before, uh, you know, all of these sort of cross currents and synergies that we're starting to see this growing evidence that Uber is is, is being able to, to generate from having multiple products on the platform. Uh, you know, that's not that's something that's going to be a little bit harder for, for Lyft to, to replicate, obviously. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, I guess, maybe a little bit more, I don't know about cautious, but uh, not as quick to, to read through that, you know, the Lyft print and the Lyft guide are going to be um, as robust as Uber's. Right, and on the driver front, we heard from Uber that their driver signups went up 76% a year over year, which definitely caught my eye. We'll see what Lyft does on that front. Tom, good to catch up with you. Good to see you. Tom White, DA Davidson, analyst who covers Uber and Lyft for that matter. Thank you.